Thank you. A very good evening to all of you. It is such a great honor to be in Israel. And uh, I think we need to give the state of Israel a big clap. A big one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Albert, Michelle. Thank you so much for that word, madam. You've taught me a new word tonight. And uh, I don't know where to start, but I just felt I want to th thank God for that music team. I really want you to give them a big hand. I really mean that with all my heart. There was something that broke in the supernatural when we started to worship God. And so thank you for that. You know, as I was sitting there listening to all the prayers and listening to the words, there's one word that comes straight into my heart, and it's a simple word, and it's called revival. <laughs> revival is what is going to change the world, and it's starting in Jerusalem. Come on, give the Lord a clap. <laughs> revival. John Wesley said the definition of revival is a people saturated with God. And I don't know about you, but I am saturated with God tonight. <laughs> Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll watch over the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. For we ask it in your precious name, amen. Amen. If you, if you have your, um, your agricultural manual with you tonight, could you please turn to the book of Numbers? This is my agricultural manual. This is the book that tells me when to buy cattle and when to sell cattle. Oh, yes. This is the book that tells me when to plant potatoes and when not to plant potatoes. This is the book that tells me to love my wife. This is the book that tells me not to antagonize my children. This is the book that tells me to respect my elders. This is the book of life. This book saved my soul. I'm not here tonight to make any apologies for anything. I love this country. I love this city. I've been coming here since 2003. Every time I come here, I spend most of my time crying and weeping. I love the Jewish people. My best friend is a Jew. Can we give him a clap, please? <laughs> if we turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 13, I love the word of God. The older I'm getting, the more I enjoy this book. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this book is alive. This book is not just a book. This book speaks more about Jerusalem than any other book in the world. This book is Jerusalem in print, Israel. Numbers chapter 13, and I'm just going to read a few verses. We start there at verse 23. Then they came to the valley of Ishkol, and there they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they carried it between two of them on a pole. Then we go down to verse 28. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified, and they are very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Goliath and a... How many of you are f facing giants tonight? How many in your home, in your health, in your finances, in your government? How many of you are fighting giants tonight? That is what God has told me to speak to you about. You know, madam, it's so easy, isn't it, to get together with Christians and with brethren and say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But meantime, back at the ranch, the wheels are coming off. How many? See? So the, the, the giants, the Am Am Amalekites dwell in the land in the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell in the sea. And along the banks of the Jordan, listen now carefully, verse 30, then Caleb quieted the people. I want to tell you that this country will never be taken by anybody because this country belongs to God. 
Can we give the Lord a clap for that? I want to, I want to teach you, I want to teach you how to say amen. Now I want to teach you how to say amen. Amen means so be it. So if you say amen, that means you agree with me. If you don't say anything, it means you disagree with me. I'm watching you. You thought that was going to fall, didn't you? No, you didn't. I had my hand out. Now, in South Africa, I come from a place called KwaZulu-Natal. That is where the home of the Zulu nation is. They don't have a chief, they have a king. Okay? There's about 8 to 10 million. They are a warlike people. But when they come to Jesus, they are warlike for Jesus. Now, when they say amen, they don't say amen, brother. Amen, like a, like a, I love ladies, don't worry, my wife's my best friend. They say, amen. When you say that, the devil doesn't even move. When you say, amen, the devil takes a few steps backwards. Can you say amen like a Zulu? You see, when you say, amen, the devil's not that interested in him. He's useless. When you say, amen, then things happen. Can you imagine when everybody in Israel is saying, Amen. Together. The walls are going to fall down. One, two, three. Amen. And we'll work on that one. And then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and he said, let us go in at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome them. How many of you here tonight believe that in the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of God, we can overcome anything. Thank you. Amen. Oh, are you getting there? Verse 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. My dear friend, I want to tell you, if I had listened to the opinions of men, I would have never done anything for God. You see, you've got to attempt something that is so big. That if it's not from God, it is doomed to fail. I'll say that again for the older people here. You didn't get that. You must attempt something. That is so big. That if it's not from God, it's going to fail. Why? Because when it works, God gets the glory. All the glory to God. Can we give the Lord a clap for that, please? That's it. Attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. Listen to this. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Goliath. They came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Your attitude determines your altitude. If you walk around broken, shoulders down, woe is me. Oh, I'm going through such a hard time. I want to tell you there's no hope for this country. The whole world. What do you expect? That is exactly how the enemy will see you, sir, as a grasshopper. I am not a grasshopper. I am a son of God. I have the power of God available to me. And so Caleb said, let's go in. He was in the minority. Just because you're in the minority, that doesn't mean to say you're wrong. Okay? Greater is he who is within me. Than he that's in the world. Amen. 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 What is troubling you tonight? We want to pray for you. Albert Vexler invited me here. I'll probably never get another chance. <laughs> so I'm going to make the most of it. I might not even get invited back tomorrow night. But I'm up here now. And I've got the mic. And if you turn me off, I've still got a voice that can speak. Oh, I love you. Let's give Israel a big clap. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. You know, today, today at the uh, Knesset, my life was touched deeply. Deeply, deeply, deeply. I, I was pinching myself. I said, Lord, am I really here? I am, am I in the holy city? Am I in the most, the most important country, the most important city, and the most important government in the whole world? I've had the privilege, like most of you, to travel. I've traveled to many cities, but today was a special day for me. 
I was so proud, so proud of what the Israelis are doing for God. But we need revival. And I believe revival, not just in Israel, but in the whole world. Because when revival comes, then victory comes. Caleb said, let's go in immediately and let's take it. I want to leave you with one verse. I'm not going to be long. I want to say to you, if you look at Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, the word of God says clearly, my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit, what spirit is that? That's a spirit of God. That is the Holy Spirit. Because he has a different spirit and he has followed me fully. He will enter into the land from whence he came and his descendants. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap, folks. And his descendants. We need some Caleb's tonight. We need some Caleb's tonight. And I want to tell you our problem in South Africa, I don't know what the problem is here. Our problem is in South Africa, we are facing a fatherless generation. Okay? Fatherless generation. These young people need leadership. These young people need to be led from the front. Don't tell them that you love God. Show them that you love God. Step out of the boat and walk on the water. Don't tell them to do it. Show them how to do it, sir. I'm a farmer. My sons are all farming. I don't tell them to take the tractor and plant the maize. I show them how to take a tractor and plant the maize. We need to lead from the front. I want to tell you a little story, and then, Albert, I want to pray for the people, if that's okay, sir. And this is a true story. It happened in South Africa. There's a very famous game reserve in South Africa, the Pilansburg Game Reserve. And something strange started to happen. The young bull elephants were starting to attack the tourists, starting to turn the motor cars over. They were actually killing the young rhinos. So they called in the zoologists. And they said to the zoologists, what, what do we do? They had to close the park. The, the zoologists came and they sat and they looked at the situation. And after two weeks, they asked a question. Where are the old tuskers? They are the elephants that have got tusks so big that when they walk, they leave a trail in the sand. Where are the old bulls? No, no, we took them out of the park. They were doing nothing. They were standing under the tree all day. The zoologist said, bring them back. They brought the old tuskers back. Within two weeks, the whole park came back to normality. Why? It's a fact. Why? Because the young Tuskers didn't know how to be bull elephants. They had no mentors. They had no one to show them what to do. I want to say to you tonight that we who have come here as pilgrims to the beloved city of Jerusalem, we need to start leading by example. We need to stop pointing fingers. We need to roll our sleeves up and we need to get stuck in. And we need to help this country. I'm going back to tell my people that we have got to support this country even more so. I'm very ashamed to tell you tonight that our ambassador has left this country. But I want to tell you, Albert, Michelle, the people of South Africa love Israel. The people. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap, please. The people. There might be some factions in the leadership that don't, but the people. And I'm telling you, we're coming back. And when we come back, we're coming back with a vengeance. I want to pray for you tonight. Is that okay, sir? Maybe there's just something in your life that's holding you back. Maybe you say, I'm, I'm too old now. No, sir. We need the bull elephants. We really do. That goes for the ladies too. There's no such word in the Bible as retirement. 
No, no, no. Only promotion. Me, I'm not dying in any old age home. There's nothing wrong with old age homes. I go there and I speak there. I'm not going there. I'm going from here to heaven. I'm a coward. I'm not going into old age home. Okay? I want to say to you tonight, what is it that you're doing for God? What is that thing which is holding you back? You say, well, I can't speak uh, English very well. Well, neither can I. But I'm doing my best. Okay? I'm not very well educated. Neither am I, actually, as you can see. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. For it is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. First the Jew. And then the Gentile. This is where the power is. And I'm talking not from a Bible college. I've never been to Bible college. Never had the privilege. But I've been to the school of life. I've seen what this book can do. This book can change masses. In six weeks, we called a prayer meeting in South Africa. We had about 1.4 million people. Six weeks, they came. 450,000 motor cars. A train from Cape Town. Thousands of buses. Straight after that meeting, our government changed. Our president was taken out. Corruption was exposed. Our currency, which was trashed, all of a sudden strengthened. They started singing hymns and praying in parliament because of prayer. The prayer breakfast. And to God be the glory. Our chief justice in South Africa is a believer. His name is Mahweng Mahweng. He's my friend. He calls me Papa Angus. In Parliament a few weeks ago, in Parliament, I don't think I've seen it anywhere in the world, madam, anywhere in the world. In Parliament, he stopped. He said, we are going to pray for three minutes. He got on his knees in front of all the ministers of Parliament, 400. And he started to pray. And they started to tape him. And then he was praying in a new language as well. I want to tell you, folks, when he inducted our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, on the platform, I was there because I was his guest. I stayed at his house. We had a prayer meeting on Friday night. He gave our new president a Bible. Where have you seen that in the world? A Bible. And the president had to accept it, didn't he? Because the whole world was watching. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap, please. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for people here tonight who have got a grasshopper mentality. It's not funny. It's not funny. We've got to start being bold. We've got to speak up. In love. Always in love. But we've got to tell the truth. It's the truth that sets you free. It's the truth that will save this nation. The truth. Only the truth. I'm sick and tired of apologizing for my God. Are you? Why are you always apologizing? I look in Europe, I look in, anyway, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> no, but it saddens me. Oh, we don't want to offend these people. Don't offend those people. You become insipid. You become lukewarm. My God says, if you are like that, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's heavy words. No more for me. I am a fool. Jesus who are you a fool for because we're all fools aren't we I'm sick and tired of making apologies and if it costs me my life then so be it because I love God I love Israel I love Jerusalem and I love Jesus and I want to say to you tonight he wants to meet with you he wants to use you madam he wants to use you more he says, but how vocal are you prepared to be for him? You, sir, started a prayer breakfast. Why? Because you want to give God an opportunity to speak through this nation to the world. When your daughter and that team started singing, I said, yes, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Don't stop. Don't apologize for nobody. Okay? You got long hair? It's okay. I'm talking to the guy. 
you got long hair, I wear a hat. Because I got no hair. All right? But you love Jesus. I saw the way you played this guitar. So I just want to pray for us tonight. I want to pray there's some people here maybe suffering from depression. Oh, it's a real thing. Maybe you've lost a loved one. You know, in my country, the farmers are getting murdered. Many. My wife is sleeping in, on her own tonight on our farm. Right around me, there's, people, there's been some horrific murders, farm murders. 4,000. Oh, yes. But we ain't going nowhere, sir, until Jesus says so. And he ain't told me that. He told me to come here. Thank you, Ray. Vicky. Thank you, Robert. Elise, I love you. Sarah. This man here goes with me all around the world. This man pays his own way. Doesn't ask for nothing. This man. He's dedicated. We don't go on our own because we know the devil. I don't go anywhere on my own. Nowhere. And I'm an old grandfather, 11 times over. Don't go anywhere on my own, sir. Because we're fighting a spiritual battle. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a clap. We go together. All my children are serving God. You say to me, tell me what your qualifications are. Well, my qualifications are, number one, I've got the same wife that I've always had. That's number one. That's right. That's number one. Number two, my children are serving God, all of them. And my grandchildren. And my adopted children, 27. 27 adopted children, Zulu children. 350 spiritual sons. 350, sir. I pray for them every day. I'm a rich man. Why do I want money? I don't need money. When I can't work anymore, they'll look after me. Won't they? No? Yes. Okay, folks, I want to finish now. I think I've overstepped the mark, so I'm going to close. Will you have me back tomorrow night? If I finish now. Okay, I've got it. Is it possible that the music team could play one song before we... Okay, come, guys. Come, come up here. Then I won't feel so lonely. I want, I want us to, to pray. I really do. It's been an amazing day. It's been a heavy day because we know what we're up against. We know what this government's up against and we love them so much. So it's a real day. But it's a joyous day. Because you see, sir, at the end of the day, the victory is God's. Amen. Can you say that? Can you say amen? Amen. No, no, you go a bit deeper. Amen. That's not too bad. Amen. So we're going to pray before the band plays. And we're going to pray under the band. You can also pray. I really want us to, if, if this is okay by you, Albert, I want us to commit our lives afresh and promise tonight. Promise the Lord that we will do everything in our power to ensure that this country shines as a light to the nations. That this city, a city on a hill, will be protected. And you're going to use it. You're going to use the opportunity in your country when you go home to tell people about the living God. This is not a relic. This is not a history. It is historical, but this is a life. This, 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 this city is pulsating. It's got pulse. The heart is beating. And some of us are sleeping. So tonight we're going to change that. Would you like to pray that prayer with me? If you would, can you stand up, please? Stand up tonight and say, I'm going to stand up and be counted. I'm going to be counted. I'm not ashamed to be in Jerusalem. I'm not ashamed to walk the streets, wherever it is, and say, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. When Jesus comes back, he mustn't have to look around and say, are you a, are you, are you a, are you a follower? you're a compromiser. For me, there's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other God. There's no other God. All roads do not lead to heaven. Not in that book. Is that right, my girl? Do you know that? Yes, sir. Do you know there's only one road? Did you know that? Do you know what it says in John 14, 6? He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one, no one goes to the Father but by me. Therefore, you have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to the people of Israel.
tell them and show them the way in love. Amen. So we're going to pray with your eyes open so you can have a good look around because you're going to be held accountable tonight. Because as was said, the Lord is watching this meeting. Thank you for praying that prayer. Pray after me, please. And I want you to pray loud and clear. I will speak slowly. Are you ready, Ben? You're also going to pray. Come on, don't start until I tell you. I don't want to make a fool of you in the front of all these people. I have to give you a hiding. What's a hiding? It's a hiding. You like that? Okay, shall we pray? <clears throat> Will you join me? Dear Lord Jesus, this evening, I repent from a sin of unbelief. Please forgive me for having a grasshopper mentality. I love Israel. I love Jerusalem. I love the Jewish nation. I love my friend Jesus Christ I promise tonight to do everything in my power to ensure that this country stands and prospers I promise to pray every day for the peace of Jerusalem and all its people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.